Grand Sports Center for Friday. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. I am Donald Agbamobo. Today we have yet another bumper edition as it usually have and um, so much lined up for your pleasure this morning. We'll, we'll start with um, the, the news that um, National Sports Festival Yedo 2020 has been uh, now as a new date. You know it has been shifted twice from the earlier date of um, March 2020, but due to the coronavirus, it was shifted to sometime in December, between 3rd and 18th of December. Then later it was postponed indefinitely, but now we understand that a new date has been fixed. So it will, so it will hold in January, from the 3rd of January to the 17th. Also, the Ministry of Sports is not done yet. We're trying to um, reorganize the setup in the Super Eagles. You know, the minister has been having series of meetings. He has been making, he has been talking, and he had a elder meeting with the Iraqi of Nigeria Football Federation over the situation in the Super Eagles. A sign that he's not just happy with the outcome of the last matches against Sierra Leone, where we had a 4-4 draw in Benin, and then a 0-0 draw in Freetown. So he's been talking since then, and, he, and like I said, Eli, he had a meeting with the NFF earlier this week with some decisions taken. But then more is still coming out of that meeting, and we understand that the minister has given directive that henceforth, anybody that does not have business in the camp of the Super Eagles should not be seen there, which means uh, football scouts that normally come around when Super Eagles players are in camp, and also all the hang and so on are no longer welcome in the camp. And it's been signed. The NFF has been directed to implement this directive. And we also understand that players will no longer be invited to the Super Eagles camp just for the sake of it. Now it's going to be based solely on current form. So even if you have played 15 matches for the Super Eagles, if you are not playing very well at that, part, at that particular point in time, you will no longer be invited. So only those that are playing well or are in good form, they will be invited. So those are some of the new decisions. Shall we be talking more about them on the program? Uh, the CAF Champions League finals will play today. A bit of an irony because uh, this weekend uh, marks the beginning of CAF competition for 2020-2021 season. But then the one for 2019-2020 have not been concluded because the final, which is between two Egyptian teams, Al Ali and Zamalek was shifted because of issues uh, surrounding uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So, but now that final will be played today at the Cairo Stadium and it involves two Egyptian teams. But then tomorrow we'll see the preliminaries of the, of the next uh, competition, which is the CAF Champions League for 2020-21, get on the way. We understand that six players are have tested positive ahead of that match this evening between Al Ali and Zamalek. Three from each side, we could say a balance, so nobody is having an unfair or undue advantage over the other. So, which means six players will not be in action in tonight's final. Um, Europa League matches were played yesterday. We shall do a review of those matches. The Tigers in basketball, they are participating in the Afro Basket 2021 African qualifiers. They got their, their qualifiers to a good start with a win, 76 points to 56 points win over South Sudan yesterday. We shall be talking about that. And of course, in shooting, one of those rare sports that we hardly talk about, but then so much happened in that sport. And um, they've been having training sessions for judges. And it's an African affair. Over 30 um, uh, judges have been trained here in Nigeria from different parts of Africa, from different military formations. And um, the president of the African Shooting Sports Federation, uh, Azem Ozni, who is from Egypt, is very much around and is a facilitator of that uh, training. We shall be talking about that. What does, what does that mean? What does this mean for the sport of shooting in the country? Diego Armando Maradona, the football icon, the legendary player, has been laid to rest in Argentina. We shall also talk about some of the honors being done to him as we continue to bid farewell to this great footballer. Plus, our usual, the Super Eagles watch. As you know, we now talk about it. You can discuss it here in the studio. So many Nigerian players were in the news yesterday, especially in the Europa League. Some of them actually did very well scoring for their clubs, which I'll be talking about that. And today's in sports history, where we usually set you, uh, save you some of the important or great events that have happened on, in, the, in the past, on this particular day, 27th of November. So these are more we have for you on, on the Grand Sports Center today. So sit back and relax while you enjoy your time with us. I'm joined as usual by Austin Arume, 
Thank you for having me on the show. And uh, blessing Basi. It's good to be here. Together, we'll try to spice up your day. But that will be after the short break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center. Straight away, the National Sports Festival is here, and this time around, it appears that finally we have a date for the competition. It's now going to hold from the 3rd to the 17th of January. Austin Arame, good news that the sports festival is holding, but is that not too early in the year, just after the festivity? Uh, I think uh, it's going to be too early in the year. Well, then, uh, we talk about uh the, um the fact that you know um national sports festival uh is actually uh a kind of preparation you know going into uh, the tokyo olympics and you know uh at this particular point in time i believe you know uh, it's going to be better late than never you know january uh is kind of early but considering we have you know uh minimal time to prepare for tokyo olympics i think uh you know, uh, it's better that we are doing it than not doing it at all. Are we still going to get um, the best from the athletes? Because, like we said, January, after the festive period, uh, is, is this a test of the discipline, level of discipline of the athletes? Because if they know they, are, they, have, a, they have a competition coming up, they should do well to keep themselves fit. Well, generally, are, are we still going to get the best out of the athletes? Well, we can get the best out of the athletes. The athletes obviously know that they need to prepare or especially a big event in Tokyo. So I think they need to, you know, do, do better and prepare um, very well, especially for um, the big competition ahead. You know, the pandemic has been an issue, you know, obviously, but at the same time, the sports festival should be a boost. You know, should, you know, they should perform very well at the sports festival. Should be a motivation, yeah. yeah. But then, um, there will be no fans at the sports festival, so would this be another issue? Because you know, the idea of the sports festival is not just about the sporting events, it's about the jamboree and everything that goes along with it. And for, for a whole state like Edo, they would have wished that um, the citizens of the state um, uh, actually enjoy the full benefit of hosting the competition. So, is, is, is is this thing going to be the same, or, or are we just holding this festival just because it has to hold? Are we really sure of um, achieving the aims and objectives of this festival at the end of the day? I believe um, at this point, at this point in time, you know, uh, we're just trying to hold it because of the fact that you know this sports festival has to hold. Uh, fans being there at this point in time, uh, I don't think it's important, you know, considering the fact that uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic and. You know, we're trying to manage the situation here. And uh, the, the most important thing is, you know, to get those that will represent Nigeria at the end of the day, to get those athletes, you know, uh, the, the, the hidden talent, so to say, that we can unearth and, you know, uh, move, you know, uh, Nigeria to another level in the Olympic competitions and even, you know, other international, you know, games. And I think that's the most important thing for me at this point. Well, while, uh, while holding the festival, it's been directed that um, it's, it's been stipulated that the festivals will be all, the games will be held under strict um, rules of um, under strict adherence to the rules and conditions of the COVID-19, uh, which means that the presidential tax tax force on COVID-19 actually gave it quiet. Said there was a virtual meeting between the PTF, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. And Ministry of Sports, which led to that decision being taken. So I'm sure that we must have put with all every parameter that is involved uh, to, for safety of athletes before giving that go ahead. But then many people are already saying that uh, is it really worth having the festival at all? Because even the Olympics was postponed from this year to next year. So why is why why is there 
why must the festival hold at, at all? Is it, must it hold? Well, um, when it comes to, you know, building up uh, um, athletes, especially, like I said, for the, for the big one in Tokyo, I think um, it, 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 should, it should hold. But when it comes to the fact that fans won't be there and there's no one to, you know, to make it um, lively, you know, that's where an issue is. Well, um, many people, I, I, I will call the former chairman of Gombe United, uh, Shai Bogara Gombe, one of those that have actually been saying that the festival should not hold. But then it is going ahead. It's good news for the athletes. We also understand the athletes were planning on embarking on a demonstration on Monday to press for the festival to be held. So it's like the minister actually it's, it's one step ahead of them, so I'm, I'm sure that that protest will not hold <laughs> yeah. anymore. So the, the athletes now, please go home. Rather than preparing for your demonstration on Monday, just go um, back home and start preparing because the sports festival will hold in January from 3rd to 17th of January. We'll still keep you involved, informed about developments concerning the sports festival and be rest assured that uh, we're getting all the latest as we continue to build up. To that event. It's still the Grand Sports Center. We'll take a short break and we'll come back. We'll talk about football. What is happening with the with Super Eagles? The Minister of Sports on the diary is not taking it lightly. He has shown it ever since Nigeria failed to beat Sierra Leone in back to back international matches and is reading the riot hat. The latest one is that scouts and hangers on banned from Super Eagles camp and then sport players, only players that are playing regularly for their clubs in, in good form will be invited no matter how long you've been with the Super Eagles. So we'll be talking about this when we we'll come back from, the, from this break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center. Well, the, the Minister of Sports, like I said earlier, is not leaving any stone on top towards ensuring strict compliance with rules and regulations when it comes to the Super Eagles. He has talked about the natural, asking the NFF to hold him to a higher standard in line with the terms of his contract. Yeah. Now he's looking at the team generally mm -hmm. by way of instilling discipline. Because actually, the Super Eagles camp, whenever they are around, is very difficult to control the movement of people in and out of the camp. So yeah. how do you think, um, uh, well, in, 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 in the first place, is this a good thing that should be done? Because some of these people who call Angus are actually relatives of the players. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to be, you know, uh, to be done, you know, but that's, uh, that's my own belief. Considering uh, this player, they actually came in for a purpose. And while they are there, I feel there should be no, no distraction. So people coming there is like a form of distraction to me because if you don't have any business there, what are you coming to do there? At that point in time, they are on a mission. Until that mission is co uh, accomplished, I don't think anybody should be allowed inside, you know, the 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 the, 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 the their, their camp because you know uh, I I believe so, uh, most of the time when the players get to come in, I think they give them one or two days, you know, to to meet one or two people, which you know uh, is normal. To, to go and meet uh, those people. But then when you are already in the camp, I believe uh, there should be no visitation because that's why uh, it serves as a kind of distraction to me. But but but, but, but did the minister need to be the one to point this out? Normally, when these players come, should the footballer also come by the NFF should have been, even before now, you know, ensuring that these things are done. Because it's, it's, these are basic things that need to be done, basic rules that need to be followed. So did the minister actually need to be the one to now point it out? Why, why have the NFF allowed this thing to uh, uh, continue? Well, the truth is there are obviously laid down rules and regulations. We know that these things are already um, laid down. These are things that we need to be, that need to be adhered to. Why not just adhere to rules and regulations? If, if it's said that um, people should not um, um, be around, around. exactly they should but the thing is one thing with um 
um, 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 fans especially fans who always people who always want to hang out people who always disobey rules but I, I believe that it's best you know to follow rules and regulations at the same time um, I think aside from the minister laying down these rules I think the the sports ministry you know or the NFF, or the NFF should be the one you know to implement it yeah, exactly. anyway um, also apart from the fact that um, scouts no longer be allowed around the Super Eagles players uh, we also know that um, the minister has also directed that henceforth only players that are playing well for their clubs will be invited to the national team how possible is this uh, I don't think that's possible I wanted to I, I didn't know you were actually going to come to that but I wanted to address that issue before, you know, uh, but you interrupted. Now you have opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, it's, that's like, you know, dictating to the coach what uh, uh, he, he is to do with his team. The, co the, the team, as a matter of fact, belongs to the coach. So wherever he wants to invite to persecute a particular match is his choice. We have a particular um, uh, coach. Um, so in he wants France, to go to, uh, to Vietnam. I invite one person. person. That's his choice. Well, I, you I, know, we have I, a coach uh, uh, in France. Uh, uh, what's his name? The French coach. You know, Giroud is not Deschamps. playing regularly. Uh, Didier Deschamps. Giroud is not playing regularly for Chelsea. But then he keeps on inviting Giroud because he knows what he wants Giroud to do for him in, that, in, his, in his team. So you cannot dictate to a coach who and who to invite and who I, not to invite. I, I, I want to believe that um, in that situation, we, 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 the minister or whoever is involved is looking, should be looking at the extreme cases. A Giro, the example you just pointed out, Austin just pointed out, a Giro still plays for Chelsea. Even if he does a starter, he comes in, he still has game time. So he's still playing football at the highest level. But I'm sure what um, you are looking at is a situation whereby some players are playing very well for their clubs. And somehow some players are not home mothers and are not playing well. I've been invited because they've been part of them for a long time. But my question to you, Blessing, is is, is is it really does it really follow that way that if you play well for your club, you play for the national team? Um on what you is one player that we've all watched is banging in the goals in, in gang, but with the national team it's not been too prolific. So that's just an example, not taking not um, actually trying to run on what you down, but it's just an example. So how does it really work? Is, does it really follow that um, if we have to insist on players that are form for their clubs, do they, do, do, is that actually the right way to go? Yes, that's, if you ask me, that's the right way to go because a player needs to be informed. How would you not be informed for your club and you want to come and play for the national team? How do you play you know, better? You know, we just take players just because they're Nigerian, you know, and, you know, come to play for the national team. That's not how it's supposed to be. If you're acting international football everywhere, that's how it's been done. When a player performs very well in a club, you know, a, the coach obviously uses that player even mostly in a, in, um, 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 in, in a, in a, um, in a competition or an event, you know. Well, I, I think this, this will be a matter of debate for a long time to come because um, you, you, you can't actually put, you can't actually put a, 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 a mark where this statement starts and where it ends because it's a very big statement. Some players, like we said, some scenarios were pointed out. Austin just pointed out a scenario of using the, the analogy of, uh, of um, Juru. And, and we know that some players actually, they play well for the national team. And when they invite them, they give in their best. So, well, I know that this is something that the NFF technical crew will have to work on and uh, to get the best for national team. So talking about Nigerian football, Good news coming in for Bauchi that we now have an, a, a new and upgraded FIFA technical center in Bauchi. You know, if we have one in, in uh, Abuja, where we, where we call the FIFA Gold Project, it has um, uh, um, an hostel facility, it has a training pitch. So that's where most Nigerian national teams are camped, really the age group national teams when they gather in Abuja. I'm sure the Flying Eagles and the Cold Nickers are there presently. And so it's been providing facilities. So in Bauchi, FIFA has also, also provided funds for the upgrading the technical center and that um, building has been completed and handed officially by the contractor and the, and the, uh, the contractor has handed it officially to the Indian Football Federation. So Austin, um, for sporting facilities can never be enough yeah. but then this kind of situation is another uh, 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 way of developing the game in Nigeria. Mm, uh, yeah, I think so uh, but the fact of the matter is you know uh, 
you know, at this point in time, it's not about, you know, opening up uh, these uh, centers. It's not about building these centers. But then what you do with them, that's the most important thing. It's not just building the center. What are you doing with the center? Are we going there to do, uh, uh, to celebrate wedding ceremony? Is that what they are going to be doing there every, every, every time? So that, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. If we are having something like this, it's, it's a good uh, idea, it's a good initiative. But then the most important thing is to put it to good use. And by putting it to good use, I mean, you know, uh, we use it for uh, to build players. You know, we use it to, uh, play, uh, to play matches, you know, uh, good matches on, the, on that pitch. And then you use it to, you, you can as well, you know, uh, form a team where we are using that stadium, you know, to train and they're using that, that, uh, that particular uh, facility to, you know, build a, 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 a team. That's what I'm saying. So and actually, this what we have in Bauchi presently is a technical center that encompasses maybe a technical training facilities, yeah. conference room, probably um, um, accommodations as well. But this actual changing pitch is still yet to be built. That will form the phase two. This is phase one. Uh -huh. The phase two has to do with the, with the training pitch. So by the time training pitch comes, it will become a complete facility where we can have such things. But then, blessing, we have other ones coming up in Benin Kebi and Oborodo, somewhere in the Delta State. FIFA funding all these projects in, in Nigeria. And um, it can only be good for Nigerian football. Oh, yes, it's, good. it's going to be good for Nigerian football. FIFA, you know, Involving in um, things like this, funding um, a FIFA project is really going to be good for Nigerian football. But all this paparazzi, when there's no, you know, there's no training facility, there's no pitch readily available. I know with time these things will come up, but the, the very most important thing to me is, you know, developing talent, you know, because we can bring a super egos or, you know, a super falcons from. You know this um, these people it's an international um development so it, it's going to help you know develop talents and of course um, we also understand that um two nigerian female referees i'll start with you blessing because it's involved female referees and um, they have been pre-selected for the 2023 fifa women's world cup the next five women's world cup is taking place in uh, australia and new zealand they, they are jointly hosting it and two nigerian referees female referees have been shortlisted we have Indeed, the Madi, who been shortlisted as one of the 10 African um, center referees, while Mimi Sen Iyore so, uh, been shortlisted as one of the 13 African um, first assistant referees. So, but then, Nigerian referees are nowhere to be counted when it comes to FIFA World Cup. Not even uh, African Cup nations, you hardly see Nigerian referees. But if these female referees are uh, now taking it to another level and um, they, they are, they, they, it's a pre-selection which means that they, are, they have been included in the pool from which they are going to select which is a good development because we have never been actually included in the pool before so now it means that they have the possibility of being selected at the end of the day so what does this mean for nigerian football and the referee profession generally well, it's, it's a good thing to the Nigerian football and um, the fact that um, women have always um, made mark, especially in female football. Imagine um, the World Cup in 2023 and obviously they are already um, making plans and preparations before, before, before then. It's actually a good thing and um, I'm, I'm glad that um, female are, are actually, you know... Taking the bull by the exactly. they're leading the charge, right? Moving up Where to the men have not been able to, <laughs> to, to go, the female are, are getting there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. and, but then, um, Austin, generally this is good for Nigerian football because yeah. this is one area that we know that Nigeria, we say, say Nigeria is a super power in football in Africa, but then when it comes to officiating, our referees have not been there. So this is another positive development for Nigerian football, right? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, I just want to give kudos to uh Aisha uh, uh Faladi, you know, she's doing a good job. You know, uh she she actually made a decision over the the the, the women's uh, football league recently and I it got me thinking, 
that if we have administrat administrators acting like this in Nigeria, then Nigeria football will not be where it is. You know, uh, we have a, a situation where clubs were not actually prepared. And, you know, uh, he gave them the, uh, the sound of notes, uh, the warning notes. And then at the end of the day, she made a decision, you know, uh, that the league will start with, when, uh, with, uh, um, whether the team is ready or not. Even if it's a team we have that is ready, let's use the A team. And I, I believe, you know, that's what we should be doing. And uh, in the area of, uh, you know, uh, the referees, uh, I, I, I think while we have this issue is the fact that um, referee welfare in Nigeria is something we have to look into. You know, uh, over the years, I think I was opportune, you know, to watch a particular match, uh, I think an NNL match, you know, back then in the village where you see a referee coming down to that place and, you know, the referee uh, is being taken care of by the home team. So what do you expect the referee to do? If you have a referee coming... You and expect then him yeah, to be very fair, yeah, yeah. to be very fair, because, fine, the fact that the home team is taking care of the referee yeah. does not make him now um, have to appease them. Yeah. So that's the situation. So that's it's, the situation. it's not about the home team <laughs> taking care of the referee. Yeah. It's about the referee being professional. Yeah. So it's not about the home team being... Ready. Even if the home team takes care of you, you must have to be fair. When, when a referee comes into Nigeria to appreciate Nigeria versus Syria alone, who takes care of the referee? Uh, you know, <laughs> so, so it's, it's about being professional. <laughs> so let's not even go there mm -hmm. at all. Uh, but the good news is that things are changing mm -hmm. because you can't be have it perfect. Even the English Premier League that we all adore and we look forward to yeah. and we regard as the best in the world, we've seen some very questionable refereeing decisions. And obviously, there are even uh, sometimes you see players, fans come out of publicly accuse a particular referee of favoring a particular team. And some, some of these things are so obvious, even to you watching at all, yeah. and you begin to say, ah, something really is happening. So it's not peculiar to Nigeria. Maybe Nigeria's one was a bit on the high side, but I think those things are potentially reduced to the present yeah. minimum. Credit to Aisha Falode, like you said. Also to Link Mind Company, who in recent times are now taking up the burden of paying for the indemnities yeah. of the Nigerian referees. Probably that's why we have referees like um, Indidi Madu and Mim Mimisen Iyore, now be recognized globally. They're in the frame to be considered for the FIFA World Cup 2023. We wish them good luck, but they need to continue to do their job well. They have the Nigeria professional league starting. We have contender matches starting. They're going to be involved in all those things. They're going to be assessed. Uh, their performances in all these competitions will be assessed from now till when the final list of referees and officials for the, 20, for the 2023 Women's FIFA Women's World Cup will be made. We wish them the best of luck. It's still the Grand Sports Center. We'll still have more for you on the program. The CAF Champions League final comes up later today, while the competition for next year, the same CAF Champions League, starts tomorrow. So this, this is a very, very unusual year. We shall be talking about this when we come back from this short break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center. The Cairo International Stadium will be the venue for tonight's um, CAF Champions League final between two Egyptian teams, Al Ali, who are nine times who are chasing their ninth uh, title, and of course uh, Zamalek, who are seeking their sixth title. So two highly successful teams in the competition playing in the final. You could not have wished for a better matchup. And for the first time since 1965, the competition will be played will be just a one leg affair. So which means probably this is one area we should look we should look into. But we'll talk about that. Um blessing Al Ali, Zamalek, two Egyptian team. Is this is this more like a like an Egyptian league match <laughs> or <laughs> a, than a calf champion. Anyway, they are just judge by the wayside. Well we can always expect the best from these two teams, right? Yes, we can expect the best Al Ali, Zamalek two big teams, especially um, in um, e Egyptian, Egyptian League and also um, in the CAF um, competition. Well, 
I, I think they will go at loggerheads so at the end of the we'll see we'll not deciding factor at the end of um, the the match but we wish them the very best you know and i expect that this match is going to be um, a very tough game you know yes indeed um but then uh there will be no spectators and six players will be missing three on either side we have the likes of uh, Walid Suleiman, Saleh Goma, and Malian Aliu Dieng, who are all midfielders missing for Al Ali. And um, Zamalek will be missing defenders Mahmoud El Wesh, Hamdi, and Abdullah Goma, and midfielder Yusuf Obama Ibrahim. So it's 3 3 apiece, so no on your advantage over the other. Yeah. So the COVID 19 is re as already said again. Uh, are we still uh, going to get the best? Uh, I believe so. Uh, you know, these are just three players, you know, six, uh, six I think three from each side. Uh, that's what I mean, you know, three players missing from uh, a side. I don't think, although it depends on the player that is actually missing, but then three players each missing from each side, I believe uh, it's, gonna, it's not going to drop uh, the quality of the, the, the match, you know, considering, you know, Alali, Zamalek, you know, they have a uh, Proven records, you know, uh, the it shows the how strong the league is for two teams to come from the same league uh, playing in the Cup Champions League final. It shows you uh, that you know, they have a very strong league. So, uh, and one thing I, I observe is the fact that you, you know uh, they look out for the best, you know, from everywhere they don't mind coming to nigeria to pick players i have seen nigeria players moving to al ali nigeria players moving to all these places i'm talking so, about nigerian players there's yeah. a nigerian player that will feature into this match most likely um junior jayi he plays for al ali he's been there since 2016 when he moved from cs Ferguson of tunisia and um, he has been among the goals in this competition he has even played against zamalek he played against zamalek in the super cup um, early in the year when he scored two goals against zamalek so this is uh, a, a very good hunting ground for Junior Ajayi. Um, oh, bless him. We have a Nigerian in action. So Nigerians will always seem to, our, our teams will not get there, but Nigerian will always be represented okay. there. But then, how do you see um, um, Junior Ajayi? He's one player that uh, many people have actually have said, why is he not in the Super Eagles? Another opportunity for him to showcase why he actually needs to be in Super Eagles, right? Well, <laughs> he probably has a reason for. You know, playing in um, and, and playing where he, he cho chooses to play, you know, and um, he's playing for a team that is a league team that is uh, obviously big when it comes to African football. Yeah, one of the know. best teams in Africa. Exactly, right? one of the best teams. So, if he chose to come to Nigeria to play, fine, but we believe that he's a better player, already netted nine goals, right? But... No, that was for last season. That was for last season. Okay, fine. Um, we we should expect him in the Super Eagles. You know, wish that he comes to play for us because he's a very good player. You know, Nigeria needs players like um, Junior and Jerry. Yeah, we need our best players at all times, and um, we also understand that uh, the winner of this competition will go with three million dollars, three point five million dollars. <laughs> How big is this man? <laughs> I think it's, it's huge, considering... Uh, huge. It's huge. You know what the winner of, of UEFA Champions League is? Uh, uh, you know, we are, we are not there yet, you know, but considering we are in Africa, and, uh, you know, we don't get, uh, I think, a lot of uh, sponsorship uh, being pushed into football. Uh, but $3 million, I would say, is okay for an African club. But then, Alali, they've invested enough money to brought in the South African coach from uh, uh, Melody Sander. Yeah, so I believe uh, to them, $3 million uh, might not be anything, but if you give that to a Nigerian club, I think it will go a long way. Anyway, if you ask me, yeah. $3 million is way, way short of what <laughs> African teams should be <laughs> fighting for in this age and time. For what is big business world over, over why is it not the same in Africa? Probably the administrators need to start looking at themselves. If you're not good enough to be there, why do you just want to be there? Because we need people that can actually bring in investment to African football. One of the days when African football, we see it as maybe just waiting for FIFA to hand out, to give handouts to Africa for us to run the game. We need to be able to attract investment into the game in Africa. And African football has enough, enough quality to attract the right investment. 
We're also talking the CAF Champions League. Apart from the final today, like we said earlier, the irony of this year is just that the, the last edition of the CAF Champions League has not ended. The, uh, already the, the, if the, the next year's zone is starting. So while the CAF Champions League final is being played today, we hope that it's concluded. It is not uh, postponed. It is not ending the stalemate. We, we hope that it will conclude today. Then tomorrow immediately, the one for next year gets on the way. In the preliminary matches of the CAF Champions League built for this weekend. Nigerian teams, four Nigerian teams are involved in two in the CAF Champions League, two in the Confederations Cup. We have um, Eimba going to Burkina Faso to play against Raima. We have um, um, Rivers Angel going to Kutura Guinea to play with uh, Fortunato Kings. We have um, Canopilla is going to Senegal to play with AGF of Senegal. And the only team that will play in at home is Plato United, and they will be playing against Simba of Tanzania. Their coach, Abdul Maikaba, talking about Plato United, is sounding optimistic. Given the fact that Plato United have not even played any match this year, and the fact that they are preseason, they've not been too impressive. And Simba, their opponent, only last weekend, the Tanzania League has gone up to more than five weeks old. And last weekend, they went away to beat the opponent 7-0. What do you feel we should be expecting from Plato United? Should we still be hopeful? Let me sound like one. Um, Diego, it's in the hands of God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, everything is in the hands of God, but then you must also make effort as a human being. Yes, well, I, I think that Plato United have an, an upper edge, you know, judging by the fact that they're playing. Uh, home. Yes, home. not just at home, they are playing in just, no, initially they were supposed to play in Pauchi because the stadium was not ready, but now the just stadium mm -hmm. have been upgraded, so they are playing really, really at home. Yes, they, they are playing at home and they have, you know, an advantage. They've been playing this season, like I said um, before, you can't use the position to judge the actual, you know, events. So, um, I, I think um, they will do a better, they will do better in, um, in, in that match against the Tanzanian team. Uh, played, um, uh, Eimba, Eimba, who, who are the other team in the CAF Champions League, uh, away to Raima of um, Okina Faso. The same team they beat at this stage of the competition last season. Yeah. Are we expecting an, a repeat or Raima now to go out for a revenge? Yeah, I think Eimba might come up short uh, against Raima away from home, considering they've been away from action for a while now and i think this is their first competitive match they are going to play so at this point in time i don't feel uh they'll have this uh they might have the this momentum yeah that momentum going into this game but then i believe uh they have they have a good side their strong side and i believe uh overall in, uh, after uh, the second leg, I believe any any will scale through. And those are the teams for the CAF Champions League. We are for the Confederations Cup. Cano Pillars will be away to AGF of Senegal. Blessing Cano Pillars. We had, as I yesterday, the issue of the coach, the new coach, Scala, uh, the Frenchman. Some of the members of board of the team are already doubting, questioning his credentials because they say since they came on board, the team has been doing badly. In the preseason uh, ma pre matches, they lost 5 0 to Asaba United, and they said they drew, had a 1 1 draw with an academy team. Well, for a team going on the continent, these are not two good results. I'm going to play against a team, a Senegalese team like AJF. Well, well um, football sometimes is unpredictable, you should ask me. But Canopilas um, should um, obviously do well. You know, like I said, the preseason cannot. I know they lost against them, um, yes, Nasa United, even um, Plateau United too, and also um, the league team. But at the same time, we we should sh they should use that team um, to work on the fact that um, they are playing um, a better team, you know, and even do better, you know, playing. They should, should even do better in their game. So yes. let, let's hope that the preseason my friendlies have exposed them to their flaws and the coaches have been able to identify them and right all the wrongs as they go to Senegal. The other matches between River St. Angels, they'll be going away to play Fortunato Kings of, of um, Equatorial Guinea, another team that's not much known about them. Then, they're presenting their country, so they must be good. This is where we'll take a break on this issue of African CAF 
competitions and when we come back we'll go straight to Europe where we'll talk about the Europa League matches that we played yesterday. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center and in Europe yesterday it was Europa League action across Europe. So many interesting results, so many matches played, we can't even go through all of them. But some important ones, AC Milan and Lille played a 1-1 draw in France. Lille beat them 3-0 in the first time they met mm -hmm. and now it was 1-1. Uh, AC Milan riding ice, we are beating everybody, they are topping and everything. It's like they find it difficult to get going in the Europa League. Why is it like this? Same uh, with Liverpool. You saw them lose to uh, Atlanta yesterday. Uh, two I days think, ago. I think to me is the kind of uh, blip for AC Milan. You know, before uh, the Lille game, I think they won the previous two, and uh, you know they lost that uh, particular particular game. But then the Lille side, the this Lille side, they are also in form. You know, uh, they are playing well in France and uh, they're also doing well in Europe so uh, a 1-1 one -one draw away from home for Milan is actually uh, fair you know if you have to consider the fact that Lille actually uh, they are the form team you know coming into this uh, Europa League clash. Another match that was true especially was Real Madrid just Benfica. I don't know surprising because Benfica is a big thing. They are in fact normally they are supposed, they are supposed to be in the Champions League but they are here in the Europa League but Rangers have been riding high this season. They are topping the, the Scottish Premier League season and they are playing so well. They've not lost a match in this league and they are topping their group also in the Europa League. And in yesterday's match against Benfica, they went two goals ahead. Then Benfica came back and equalized 2-2. Two -two. What could have happened? <laughs> well, football is unpredictable if you ask me. Ben Benfica um, took uh, the advantage they had and they had to equalize them, their goals. So that tells you how you you never can you never can tell most times you you probably look at that game and think that Rangers will just get home with that two zero win at the end of the day, but no, it didn't turn out to be that way. Napoli actually uh, won their match by two goals to zero and um, in honor of um, Diego Maradona they beat HNK Recheka. In view of this situation of the time maradona was being laid to rest their hero their icon yes. and before the match you understand that they paid homage to him by showing his number 10 jesse did they have any choice not to win yesterday at all <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I, I believe so you know uh considering the fact that that match uh was actually a match you know i'll say they play they played in honor of maradona and then consider the fact that they are playing against a weaker opposition. You know, uh, when you compare the quality of players, you know, uh, at, uh, in the Rejeka team and you compare the Napoli team, I don't think uh, it should be any, there should be any fuse, you know, uh, with Napoli, you know, beating this team. So I believe uh, it's a fair one. And I also believe it's a good uh, uh, memorial match for uh, Maradona. Well, we can't talk about all the matches, but Apart from those two, those uh, Glasgow Rangers, AC Milan, where we expected better results, but then others went as expected. It was Granada 2, Omenia Nicosa 1. Um, our own um, Abdullahi Shehu was in action for Omenia Nicosa in that match. We had uh, AZ, uh, we had um, Tottenham beating Ludogorets by four goals to nil. Stand that um, our own, um, or oh, Nigerian born Dele Ali, who has been out of favor featured in that match and he earned the praises of his coach, which means probably is back to his best. We had Sparta Prague beating Celtic by four goals to one. Leicester, with Kelly Enacho in action, played a 3-3 draw with SC Braga. Enacho was withdrawn in that match in the 69th minute. Villarreal and Maccabi Alpha played 1-1. One -one. Uh, Chukweze was in action also. And um, CSK Moscow played a 0-0 draw with Fernando. There were so many draws. 
in the Europa League last season, last week, yesterday. But some teams have actually made it through to the next round. Teams like Arsenal, Tottenham, uh, even Leicester, Villarreal, they are already through to the next round of the competition. So that's the Europa League for you. We'll continue to keep you posted on Europa League matches whenever they are played on this program. We'll take another short break and when we return, we'll talk something else. We'll talk basketball. The Nigerian the Tigers got their Afro Basket 2021 qualifiers taking place in Kigali in Rwanda off the very flying start. They beat um, South Sudan by whooping 76 to 56 points in their first match yesterday. We shall be talking about that when we come back from this break. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center and Nigeria, like I said earlier, up and running in the Afro Basket um, 2021 qualifiers. They beat South Sudan 76 to 56 points in Kigali yesterday. Well, given the fact that Nigeria, when you talk about the top basketball playing nations in Africa, you talk, of course, Senegal, Angola, Nigeria, between the worst round these three teams and South Sudan. Was the results not expected? Of course, the results were expected, and the, the Tigers obviously, you know, do us proud. You know, they show that they are, they are giant, especially when it comes to basketball. We know this is like um, the opening game, but at the same time, we know that um, they are also going to, you know, go further than this um, than now in the competition. So they've proven to be, you know, a great. Um, basketball team that will you know obviously move ahead of um, move ahead in their competition you know and win every every game as it comes the tigers next play host country rwanda in the next match so how was the setting now nigeria has won the first match and then um, obviously they are getting into their group so are we going to see them even go one better again i believe so i think uh these are the tigers team their team that is actually high in confidence at this point in time i i know uh what you know uh the nigerian basketball uh federation what they, they've been able to do so far you know uh, i think it's beginning to resonate and i'm seeing that on the uh on, on the court right now i believe uh this qualification is going to be uh let me not call it an easy ride but you know i don't see any uh, anybody that can withstand uh, this, uh, the Tigers team. In so this, uh, the, the fact that the Nigerian Basketball Federation contracted um, Mike Brown, the U.S. coach, who has uh, been in charge of the Detroit Pistons in the past, I will tell you how high level of a coach he is. Yeah. So can we say that he's already paying off already? Of course, already paying off. If you look at the, the, the Tigers playing as a team, you know, it shows how much... Um, how much understanding is in, 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 in the basketball team, how much they are ready to go out there and then perform even you know, better. We, the, the, the Tigers, good luck in, the subs, in their next match against um, host nation Rwanda, which will come up on Saturday. Then they have their last match on Sunday against Mali. That is another tough one for them. So we them the best of luck. And moving on from basketball, we talk shooting now. There was, this one sport that we really get to hear about, but then a lot of other things are happening. Nigeria is playing host to an African tra training course for judges of shooting sports in Africa. Yes, and, and we are over 30 participants, I tell you, are drawn from various parts of Africa, cutting across various military and paramilitary 
backgrounds including Nigerian Army, Air Force, Navy, Police, DSS, Customs, Civil Defense, Lagos State Sports, Sports Commission, Ogun State Sports Council, and Safari Hunters Association. The, the president of the African Shooting Sports Federation, ASSFF, General Azim Ozni, who is an Egyptian, is facilitating the course and they say that the main aim of the course is to get um, the judges uh, in tuned with the latest uh, rules and regulations governing the sports and these are the people that will now go back to their constituencies to now teach the rules and regulations to uh, their constituencies so that the development of the sports from the grassroots begin to take effect. Austin, shooting in Nigeria. So it, it's not even, it was not even included in the National Sports Festival. Yeah. That will tell you how um, relegated the sport is in the country. But should it be the case? But this is a sport that is attracting the, the continental president and they are, they are going all out to train participants, which shows the activities are going on. So what does this tell you about shooting? I think uh, a lot has been said about how you know we, play, we, we place priority on uh, key sports and you know uh, I think if we can look for a way to like add shooting to uh, sports in Nigeria I believe it will uh, give us more option you know uh, in regards to getting medals at the Olympics and yeah talking about medals talking about medals shooting actually gave us some medals at the last all African games I can't put a finger on the number of medals but yeah. we won medals in shooting, we even won a gold medal in shooting in all, last all Africa games in Morocco. That was last year. So with, with this in mind, is, is, is this not a sport like Austin was saying that Nigerian that Nigerian sports authorities should begin to give some little amount of uh, attention? Yes, um, we should give a um, lot of attention, especially in shooting sports. is is a recreational sport. It's a, a sport that so many people love um, to, to 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 participate in one way or the other. I use myself as an example. I love shooting sports. <laughs> you know how to say. shoot? <laughs> because we, we, we understand that um, so so the, the course features a specific training in air rifle yes, and exactly. air pistol, uh, yes. as well as uh, general international shooting sports federation technical rules and regulations. So talking about air rifle and air pistol, so you... you, you yes, you at least there should be, because when we talk about shooting sports, we talk about precision, how to aim, how to target, how to, you know, really get to that particular, you know, position. It really clears um, the air where, you know, you have, you know how to um, position. If at, you know, it's a sport that you possibly enjoy. So yes, indeed. I, I, just hope, I just hope that um, Blessing will have an opportunity of talking to <laughs> the sports authorities to educate them just like she has us done. To us, because I must say, sports like this uh, are what are given attention to, so that we can, like Austin rightly mentioned, increase our prospect of medal in various international competitions, not just the African Games, not just the Olympic Games, but other competitions that we have around. We'll take a short break now. When we'll come back, if time will permit us, we'll talk a little about the Super Eagles players as we take Super Eagles watch. Welcome back to the Grand Sports Center, and we should actually be not saying welcome, we should actually be doing our goodbyes because uh, time has shown that um, our time is almost up. But before we go, we just quickly close over the Super Eagles what to tell you some things about Nigerian players who did very well yesterday, especially in the Europa League, and some information about Nigerian players generally. Kaya Dolare one year is one player in the news. He has scored his fourth goal in the Europa League for Silver Sport as they beat quarterback 3-2. He scored in that match, bringing the style in the competition to three goals, four goals so far. So this one player, if they talk about current form, maybe we should be looking at players like this as well. And uh, Samuel Chukweze was in action for Villarreal as they were held, as they held um, uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv to a 1-1 draw, but he was withdrawn in the 63rd minute of that match. 
and also Kelechi Enacho failed to score. At Leicester place played 3 3 with Sponti Braga. He was also, she was also withdrawn in the 69 minute of that match. Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa has dismissed talks linking him with English Premier League side Sheffield Wednesday and um, English Champions League Championship Club, not even Premier League Sheffield Wednesday. Well, he says he, he, he left um, Manchester so that he can play at the top level in Europe, not to go and play in the Championship. So he's, he's, he has not disclosed the club that he's talking with. He's out of contract at the moment, but he said he's uh, But speculations has it that clubs in Russia, even his work club CSKO, are in, con are in contact, and also clubs in uh, Germany and um, in, in, uh, in uh, Turkey, where the likes of Galatasaray and Fenerbahce have been uh, <coughs> indicated as showing interest in the services. Zedu Senussi scored for Porto on Tuesday. That's no longer news for Sergi and the program, but the news is that he has been, his performance has ended him a place in the Euro UEFA Champions League team of the week for match day four. So he's, he has been included in that team, the team of out of all the teams. This, this is a very big achievement. Of all the players that played in March before in their various clubs, they selected the best 11 and Zedo Sanusi was included. So thumbs up for this Super Eagles player. Joe Aribo was missing yesterday when, um, when um, Rangers played Benfica, they played 2 2. And his coach, Stephen Gerrard, has given reasons saying that um, Joe Aribo was dropped because he was feeling unwell. That's why. So not something that we should, be bored, we should actually worry about. He said he's getting better. But meanwhile, his compatriot, um, Leon Balogo, played the match against um, Benfica. Good news also for Sam Kalu. Sam Kalu missed Nigeria with a three alone match because he was injured in the friendly match against Nigeria. But now, the co um, Bodo coach, Jan Luis Gasset, says Kalu is in line to play this weekend against Paris Saint Germain. Yeah, he actually came back two weeks ago for their match against Rund, but he, was also, he also limped off in that match. So, um, making, giving speculations over the relapse of the injury. But then the good news is that it wasn't as bad as the former one that, the former one that left him out for about five weeks. So, he's back this weekend, hopefully, when Budo play Paris Saint Germain. The coach says um, Samuel Kalu will be in action. A young Nigerian, Nonsor Madweke, who call, he's a Nigerian, though he's played for England under 20, but still has the opportunity to play for Nigeria, should he change his allegiance? He's called for PSV as PSV won in the UEFA Champions League yesterday and he scored, he scored the goal. He scored the goal as PSV won 3-2 in that match in the UEFA Champions League yesterday against Capo. And also for Valani Balogun, young Arsenal player, he has also played for England under 21 and um, he, is, um, he scored for Arsenal as they also played yesterday against Molda. So Nigerian players Doing all well, all round, with him, the best of luck, is what we want. So if um, this is what the minister said, Nigerian players should be invited based on current form. So if it's based on current form, this should be the players that should be invited for our next match, at least for now. So this is all about we, what we have for you on today's program, Grand Sports Center. The Today in Sports History will take it, but that will be our final uh, segment. And that will be after we've given you a closing formality. So let me quickly... Um, call um, ask Austin to. It's always. Uh, uh, I think, just like I said, there's talking about uh, uh, shooting in Nigeria. I think there, there's no time for us to talk about it. But then maybe subsequently we can talk about shooting uh, on this uh, program. So I believe and not just shooting other sports that yeah. seem to be to barely get it. Yeah, and blessing. Yes, um, the Tigers be doing Nigerian proud. And we congratulate them for their win, and we expect the, the best success. And this weekend, we rest assured that we'll be serving you La Liga match from La Liga this weekend as you join us for La Liga action uh, on Saturday, that's tomorrow. So be our guest on Grand Sport Extra for another interesting La Liga match. So from us here, I'm Donald Agbabobo. On behalf of all of us here and the entire production crew, we want to wish you a lovely weekend. We'll take the Today in Sports History as we go.